recording. Okay, so um, this is our August 23rd leadership boot camp. So I'm glad you joined us. Um, like I said, I try to keep these a half an hour. And um, so Maria, I just invited you again. I don't know if you're you're trying something else, but anyway, I just clicked to invite you again. <laughs> so anyway, so let's get started now. Um, the recording is going. So the the first slide that I just share every time. So those of you that have been with me before are gonna see, you know, the kind of the similar thing, but we're gonna come back to some of these questions that I'm saying. And, and so what are you saying to your new team people, new team reps? Um, where are you finding your new team members? and be open to having conversations with people um, as you're around, you know, in your area and whatever. So next slide goes into what is recruiting? Um, oops, I guess it doesn't. <laughs> um, okay, so these questions, we're jumping right to the end, Darwin. I don't know if you had the first page on there or not. Let's see, um, let's go, whoops. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back and uh, see. Just just uh, kill time for a minute or so, let me fix it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just noticed my picture is backwards. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's something you and and Maria, you're joining again. Is that something that is is with your tablet? Did you say? Yeah, I was trying to get on my tablet, but I'm fine now. So, okay, all right, we'll let that go. Okay, then we'll get back to run this one more time when when we get the PowerPoint up. But tonight we are going to do some interacting. We're going to be talking about how uh you know what what you're saying uh to your appointments oh it looks like it's coming up now so we'll go on to the next slide um okay what is leadership okay hold on you're skipping too many slides here okay what is leadership the avon leadership opportunity provides an enhanced opportunity for your Avon business, offering rewards and bonuses for building your team and increasing sales. So what is recruiting? So the process of having a conversation about the benefits of joining the Avon team. The next slide is what is a mentor? The sales leader in a team who has personally recruited and pointed you sometimes referred to as the advisor or the upline. Okay, now we're gonna get into our, our conversations for tonight after the compensation chart. So what is a compensation chart? And we go through that on all of our Zooms, but we put this in here for reference back to it if needed when you are got more questions about you know, how are you going to be rewarded for for the uh, bringing in new team members? So let's go to the next slide. So what are you saying? Where are you finding new team members? And be open to having conversations with people around you, okay? Now, the next slide, is a new one and it's what are you saying to yourself appoints on your team the first time you talk to them the second time you connect with them the third the fourth etc okay and then the next slide is a continuation of the same thing what information do you make sure they know about and how do you encourage them to make that first order of a hundred dollars or more and why do you want that first order to be $100 or more? 
Okay. So we're going to go back to what are you saying? So if you can go back two slides for me. Okay, so what are we saying when we come in contact with someone? I mean, it doesn't even have to be someone that, um, you know, that you know that's going to sign up. Let's just go farther back than that. Let's go back to what, you know, when you first get approached by someone, you're in a restaurant, you're taking a walk and, and you know, someone maybe sees your Avon shirt. Um, who wants to share with me? What do you say? How do you start this conversation? Oh, Roger, you're muted. Do you want to unmute yourself? Whoops, then we lost him. <laughs> okay, so Maria, do you have, like, I know that you recently got someone new. And was that, again, someone that you knew? Or was this someone that you you didn't you didn't know? A friend of mine's young, uh, daughter, she's a okay. registered nurse and uh, she's been thinking of ordering. And then all of a sudden you told me that she, um, she uh, wanted to be on my team, but um, I haven't been able to reach her. I invited her today just in case she didn't receive the email, but I haven't heard from her, but I have been trying to um, network with people at church. And okay. I have a few people that seem to be interested, especially a lady that used to sell it 20 plus years ago, like I did. So I'm okay. hoping that, you know, and I, I've been, you know, I can't pass them out in the church, but I mention it to them. And then they say, bring me a bag. So I brought a few bags last week at church. I don't go to the city often, but um, seem to be a few people that wanted to order or, and um, be on the team. So hopefully okay, they so will be. Let, let's go back. So your first interaction with them, um, what what did you say uh, even about that you sold Avon? What was your first words to them? We had a, like a senior brunch and we were all talking about uh, just, you know, dressing up and, you know, and then somebody mentioned something about makeup. And I said, you know, where do you buy your purchase your uh, makeup from? And they said, um, you know, say Sephora, Ulta, whatever. I think it was Ulta. And I said, you know, that um, Avon still exists. A lot of people didn't know that we still exist. I mean, they're like, really? I thought Avon, you mm -hmm. know, closed down or they don't exist anymore. I said, no. And they said, well, really? And they were really seemed excited. So um, we started talking and I had a couple Avon books, but I didn't have enough for as many people as they wanted, you know, wanted to. So I brought two books that week or two bags with some samples. And then the next time I visited, I, I distributed four, two at church and two at a fest. Um, and I was thinking of the next fest to maybe bring some stuff. And uh, I know the alderman, and I don't, I, I'm going to check with him, make sure it's okay. But we have a throwback fest in Chicago, um, 8th, 9th, and 10th. So I'm hoping to network with some people there as well. Okay. So um, oh, let me let Roger in there. So let's just say those ones that you gave samples to, have you talked to them again about if they tried the samples? Yes, and the, actually a woman called me today from church and she said, you know, call me back and I took, called her back, but she hasn't answered yet. But she said she wanted some things from um, one of the most, the recent one and then the next one, because I had brought three books, but 17, 18 and 19, I believe I had. Or 16, 17, 15, 16, 17. And I know you could still order from the prior one. So um, no, she's you can't. A you can't anymore. You, you only one book that we're selling from now. I know we used to be able to back order, but they took, they took, did away with that. So only the current Sorry that. thing. Sorry about that. I somehow knocked myself right out of the meeting. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> So then, Maria, after you started sharing samples and things with them, how did the conversation 
get turned into that they could join your team? Well, that that was my friend's daughter who, you know, I've been sharing her daughter's uh, musician on uh -huh. YouTube and so forth. And uh, we've been you know, helping each other out. I've been sharing her daughter's videos and kind of networking with each other, basically. And uh, she's, her daughter kind of talked about it with me, but then she just went full time as an RN. So I okay. think maybe she hasn't been able to contact me, but she told her mom and her mom told me that uh, her daughter was on my team. So I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you were, you were mentioning the other ladies from the church that used to sell. Did the conversation come up with that gal that used to sell? Yeah, she's the one that is uh, supposed to call me back today. Hopefully I'll hear from her today. If not, I'll try calling her back tomorrow. Uh, she's okay. a little older lady, you know, not old, but a little older than I. And she was like, you know, I probably sold 30 plus years ago. And I said, don't feel bad. Cause I did too. when I was not even 18 yet, you know, cause I used to sell with my sister and she's okay. actually, my sister's actually selling in Indiana now. Um, didn't know that because unfortunately we don't talk but um yes yeah, so hopefully I'll get some more people on my team and now I feel almost more encouraged now that I have somebody to you know because it's you know when you haven't been with I haven't been with Avon even a year yet and right. I know a lot of people were saying that sometimes the first year is hard it but is. now it seems like the la the last month it seems like I'm getting I have a few more customers I noticed that four people from my old neighborhood uh, added their information to my customer list. And then at least we got at least one person added to my network. So hopefully um, the other lady will want to sell as well okay. because she doesn't work. So she was going to think it would be nice for her to get, you know, keep busy. So I'm like, maybe yeah. I'll, when I talk to her, I'll kind of mention to her again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, it's it's in the places you're going, right? And with the exactly. church people that you're, you know, bringing this conversation up, and that's great. That's exactly what we want to see. Um, you know, be open to having conversations with people around you, and that's exactly what you're doing. So the key is follow up uh, with those um, and that. So Roger, what about you know? Tell me what are what are you saying to get people interested in joining your team? Or what are you saying just to get uh, the interest in Avon totally? Well, what I do mainly, we, of course, you know, I wear my uh, um, custom shirt or, or another one of the Avon branded shirts uh, whenever I'm out in public, you know, because I do get people asking, you know, and sometimes... The last person that asked me, she says, oh, do you sell Avon? I said, yes, I do. And she, she's a customer now, of course. But um, mm -hmm. she was looking for Avon rep for a long time. But then, the, see, after we talked some more, she talked, told me what her favorite products were in the whole bit, and this and that. Um, it felt right. So I mentioned to her, you know, you can get 25% off of everything in the brochure right now as an Avon representative, you know. And, you know, she's still thinking about it, but, you know, you know, I, I kind of put that, I, I put that out there for her to think about, you know, because I'm her last, it. yeah, mm -hmm. you know, telling her how much her last order would have cost her if she was an Avon rep versus her customer cost. So, right, I figured you I know, could, you can always go back to that, you know, well, you get 25 off of beauty and jewelry and, you know, 20%. For the other, you know, uh, non Avon things, but but yeah, I mean, it's just just you know, bridging into the conversation. Whether you're wearing something Avon, like I'm always wearing Avon jewelry. People are always saying something about my jewelry, and that bridges my conversation right into Avon. Or and that did you know, with me too, Don. And you know what I'm talking about with this that. Uh, that uh, amethyst uh, necklace mm -hmm. that we had in the brochure. I ordered that and I put it on a men's chain, not a women's chain, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, cause that's my yeah. birthstone. And I was with my sister in Aldi's. I was wearing that, I was nothing else a Avon, just that necklace. Uh, some boy, uh, boy, the boy, behind, uh, the woman and her son behind me, her son noticed the necklace and said something to her mom about it. And, 
I kind of heard something I looked up and she goes, oh, my son was just complimenting about your necklace. It is really pretty. You know, and I said, well, thank you. I bought it at my store, you know, and then we were talking a little bit more, you know, and then I told her some other things I buy at my store, you know, and then she goes, you wouldn't have by chance sell Avon. I said, yes, I do. <laughs> you know, so, so I gave her a business card. The uh, cashier that was uh, running my food through at the time was paying attention. She asked about it. I handed out two business cards that day, yeah. just over a necklace. That's right. That's right. That's that's all it takes sometime to get the conversation going uh, into Avon is by either wearing branded or like Maria did. She, you know, the conversation was where are they buying their makeup and things? And they were saying Aldi instead of, you know, thinking Avon wasn't still around. So being exactly. able to bring that up and say that, you know, that's that's the opportunity that they have to buy from you and then let the conversation go into how they can, um, they can also be, be their own you know person that well, they buy from so what i've learned you know if somebody's commenting something of yours uh, that com uh, complimenting something you're wearing or compl uh, complimenting how good your fragrance smells and this and that you don't say avon right away right you, you you build up into it more you get more you get them to talk more about what they're complimenting you about you know and then and say, well, you know, like I said, with that necklace, I said, I bought it at my store. I didn't even say what my store was yet. You right. know, you know, I, you know, you don't bring it. In. And then when they finally flat out say, OK, what's your store? You say, well, I'm an Avon representative. And they give and I tell them this is my online store. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you don't even mention Avon at first. You bring it in slowly. Right. Well, so, because a lot of because... people, if they hear Avon right away. They're going to they, they automatically shut up because, you know, not everybody wants to hear about it, you know. Right. But then that's also makes them want more information out of you. That's exactly, exactly. what you're going for is exactly. for to continue the conversation. And exactly. so that it doesn't end right away. Okay. All right. Any other questions about this, Maria, that that we can cover this in more detail? No, it's good. And I also have business cards that I throw in my bags when I pass them out with books. Mm -hmm. So um, that helps too, because, you know, just in case. And I put all my information in the back of the book, of course, but you just never know if it gets smeared or, you know, ripped or warped or whatever. So um, they do uh, look for my business card as well. I have a customer that just was added by on Facebook because she saw my business card. She didn't bother looking at the products or anything that was posting but she saw my Avon card and uh she uh contacted me about skin cell soft products mm -hmm. yeah and you know that's what I find like when I recently did an event last weekend too was sometimes they did not want to grab a book because they didn't want to carry it around but exactly. they would ask for a business card because a business mm -hmm. card they could stick in their pocket you know, that type of thing. But whenever you give out your information, always try, if it works, to get their information back so that the follow-up can be done. Otherwise, sometimes just waiting for them to get back to you, unfortunately, that never happens. So Exactly. And that's why I, I got um, Margie's number two last week. Exactly. So we'll <laughs> That's right. Okay, Darwin, did we have problems with the PowerPoint or you just took it off? Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna go to the next slide that kind of goes into the next step of what are you saying to your people once they become a member of your team? Uh, what do you talk about the first time you make the connection with them, whether it is just a text or it is over the phone or and the second time, third time, et cetera. So, um, Roger, I'm going to go first to you. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, you know, Maria is new into this. She just got her new one. Uh, okay. You know, well, congrats, just, Maria. 
Thank you so much. So, I feel okay, what I do, folks, Don, lately my, lately my team members have been finding me under the nesting thing. Okay. You know, so, um, yeah, so um, I've been using the text that you had given me, but I've actually kind of changed it slightly to make it mine. Yeah. Um, that's the one to get them to, to find out if they, if they receive texts. Mm -hmm. And then once I get a response from that, then I ask them, uh, which, how would you prefer to be contacted? Phone, mail, or e by the phone, email, or text. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I hear phone. So then I do talk to them, you know, and, you know, once I get them on the phone, we'll kind of just kind of shoot the breeze a little bit, you know, just to break the tension there. So mm -hmm. then I end up asking them what made them decide to join Avon, you know, and this and that. And then after I talk to them, then they get a, they get an email from me with the new representative welcome packet and right now i've got like 18 team members i'm waiting to hear from after receiving that after sending them that welcome packet mm -hmm. so yeah that's and then my next steps on that once i do start here if i don't hear from them they're going to be hearing from me here real soon yeah right yeah so you know it is because the first time you talk to them like in most cases mine are you know, I'll get an email from Avon that you have a new team member. And yep. so I will go ahead and send them a text. And, you know, I usually don't send it after nine o'clock at night, but then I've also thought, well, you know what? I know that Avon's email comes out immediately after they, you know, get the, all the process done. Uh, as becoming a rep so then I'm going well they're still up so then I'll first apologize that this text is coming so late and that um, I just want to check in with them and welcome them and to please let me know if they get this text okay so that like like Roger was talking about to just find out from them if they're getting text and a lot of times you don't hear back from them. I know like Maria said earlier that she hasn't heard back from her new one yet because it it actually is a, uh, you said a daughter of your friend. Is that right? Yeah, that's uh, my new team member here. Yeah, okay. So, so she's got a little bit closer connection than a okay. lot of times if we're getting a new team member from another state that we don't even have a clue who they are, you know? So, so it is breaking the ice a lot, like Roger said, and it's first trying to get engaged with them to, to see, you know, what is their best form of communication? Do, would they rather talk on the phone or would they rather go back and forth with text? I have to say a lot of mine still prefer text going back and forth um, because they they don't check their email. I don't, you know, it's kind of like, it depends on the age of the person that you're getting really on that, that category of it. But, you know, then if I don't hear back from them by the text saying that they, um, that they do get text, then I usually, you know, stay away for a couple days or so. And then I will, you know, by then I'm probably printing a report to see who's new. And, and then I go back through them and I do say again, without telling them who I am, um, did, do you get text? Oh. And just use their first name in there. And then a lot of the times they'll come back to me, who is this? <laughs> and so I kind of kind of laugh to myself at that point because then I know, well, they they get text, but they didn't take the time to respond to the other one. But that's okay. You know, I say thanks for responding. You know, I just want to, you know, be connected to you so I can support you. Use the word support. Mm -hmm. instead of the word help okay mm -hmm. because if if you use help then they feel that um they're helpless right mm -hmm. so it kind of gives a little bit of a negative approach support sounds a little bit like i'm here for you mm -hmm. you know right and 
I learned that from um, DSWA, Nikki Kehoe said, use the word support, don't use the word help, because then you're making them sound like they're helpless. I even okay. say support when I thank them for an order too. Thanks right. for your support. Right. Thank you, know. you for your support. I mean, that is um, the call I was on before this, the Zoom was with uh, the account executive and also uh, some leadership people in her region. And so that they covered that a little bit tonight too on what is your response when you get an email um, that someone placed an order at your site. And, you know, do you send them a handwritten thank you? Do you do it in email thanking them for the order? You know, they were talking about different ways of doing that. Um, I do, without going off the subject too much, I do just an email. Thank you for placing the order. I'm so glad that you're a loyal customer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, that's enough. You know, I don't usually have enough time to write out a thank you note and maybe include a sample, which some of the other gals said they do. Um, so, you know, it's, you got to look at it in different ways, but as far as bringing someone new into the team, and it's all about getting the engagement going so that they know that you're there to support them and then your next connection with them would be about starting to, like Roger says with his email, he sends them documents and that for their support to getting involved in Avon and you know getting their first order placed and things like that. Exactly. The key right now, when their first campaign that they start the first campaign they start is counted when they sign up as their number one campaign, okay? Then the second campaign that we go into after they've started and they've not placed an order yet is, is their second campaign. So the clock is already starting to tick with, with their getting in, getting in the system and getting that first order so that you you they know what they're doing or they know you know cuz of so many of the ones that I talk to like the second or third time they're still saying I don't really know how I earn money with this you know where am I going to earn money and you know even though they're joining a direct sales company they don't think about that they've got to share our products or a brochure or something and and get the orders to earn. You know, they they don't con that isn't a conception of theirs. So it is kind of like taking some baby steps with them, but you do want them to get that first order in in like the first campaign kind of doesn't count, but kind of does as long as their second or their third campaign, they're placing that first order of $100 or more. So they qualify for you and they start earning. That's, I mean, that's what they're really, in most cases, why they started. Some people just start because they like the products. But a lot of people start because they're looking at earning some extra money. So let's go into the next slide. And that talks more about the information, which we kind of in, you know, got that involved in the last conversation. But what information you think is important that they need to know about as soon as possible? Hmm. Well, you see, I try to make, you know, sometimes I just be flat out with it, you know, and my, and my new reps have been the ones that I do. I just flat out say, you know, that I'm going to do my best of the, um, 
support you in the sense of getting your first a uh, hundred dollar order because and i tell them i'm straight open when i say because when you place your hundred dollar order i get five more new representatives nested under me i make it very clear mm-hmm. you know so and, then, and the blue, that's, the blue that's blue that for you, you because you're at the level you're at roger right but now, somebody them, brand new, yeah mm-hmm. for them i tell them you know you, when you spend a hundred dollars, you know, with the order being hundred, you're only spending seventy five, mm-hmm. you know, because you get the twenty five percent discount off of it, and then at the award sales play a big part in uh, of helping you get uh, get your next raise, mm-hmm. uh, you know. So I go into that with them too. Okay, with them earning more by the larger size order they're placing, right? Yeah. Yeah, then letting them know that because I always get asked too, Don. Like you said, sometimes I get asked, "Well, how am I getting paid?" Mm-hmm. You know. So what I've been telling my new representatives, well, how you get paid is that when you place your order, uh, the order that you place is going to be showing your discount. If the, the your total is going to be your twenty five percent discount. So then when you pay Avon, what money is left is from the order is your money. That's how you get paid. From and then they go from your customer. Yeah. yeah. Right. And exactly. then they ask, well, how do I get paid from the online orders? And this and that. So I tell them that too. Yeah. yeah I right. tell them that the new rep, you sign up for a get you signed up for Avon wallet. So when you get an online order, your earnings will go to your card from that order. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a balance, you know, I'll let you know, sort of thing. Right. But you know, there's still kind of, I'm going to backspace a little bit here because what I am finding is that sometimes they don't even know how they're going to connect with their contacts, you know, how they're going to share the digital brochure, how, you know, so I will send them an example text that they can send to their contacts in their phone and say, hey, I, you know, I just started this new business and I'd like you to be one of the first ones that get to see the online brochure. And then oh. I suggest to them that you tell them a $60 order placed at my online store will get you free shipping. So that that way they're promoting their they're a new potential customers to shoot for that $60 order, because if they get two $60 orders, then they've reached that hundred, you know, $120 in the requirement needed for, for a new representative to be our, uh, uh, a representative that counts for you as the leader. So think about those things too, as maybe they don't, they're lost on, you know, they don't really want to come right out to customers and say, buy from me. I mean, I seriously had a representative that had gotten started and we Mm -hmm. had probably texted for, I would say a good hour back and forth. I got her connected to the Facebook group. I got her connected, you know, to me. And she was all, it it was all going good. She was so excited and everything. And then when I started talking to her about sharing Avon, she was like, I don't want to ask anyone to buy from me. I don't want to promote anyone to buy from me. Can I, can I back out? It was like, whoa, you know, it was like, wow, like a light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, you know, did I go too fast with her? But yet she seemed to be following along with all the steps we were doing. But when we got to that, she had to get orders from people to start earning you know, then she was like, I don't want to ask people to buy from me. I said, but you're asking them what they currently use. So you can show them what Avon has as, you know, maybe saving them money or, you know, supplying whatever need they have. Well, she completely closed the conversation with me and that was done. 
and she's gone. She's probably not going to do anything and is going to be one of those that go into witness protection. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm starting to feel like that too, Dawn. I know how you feel. You know, you know yeah. So so there, you know, there are there are new ones that you know you can have just a great engagement with them, but yet they they have the fear of selling anything. Well, what I always tell my new representatives too, it's like, well, now that you got your Avon business started, because some of them asked me, well, how am I going to get customers? And this, I said, first thing you do, I says, you got a Facebook, obviously, because we connected, posted on Facebook that you started your own Avon business and let the people decide if they want to click on the link. You know, just at first, just say how excited they are that they started their Avon business, this and that. And then, uh, when I told that to my to one of my reps, Angie, she post she did a post, ended up with two online orders, didn't even realize it at first. Yeah. Well, and you know, using social media is is a good way for those that I want to say are just a little bit scared about, but I see I was talking with her and sending her exactly what to say in a text. So I wasn't asking her to pick up the phone and you know give people a call because that is scary for new representatives i mean i think back when i first started i mean 40 years ago and and i went out with the manager the district manager we had district managers then and she made me go door to door and i was knocking on doors and i was praying they were not going to answer the door because <laughs> I just wanted to leave them a book. I didn't want to talk to anybody face to face. I was I like, have, hey, go ahead. I have a question for you and Roger, since you guys yeah. have been doing this a little longer. So, you know, Don, that my account was hacked um, mm -hmm. under Mitzi Penn, which was, you know, so how do you, how you've been doing this online more, you know, very often or longer? How do you, you know, because my account was hacked. I can't even get in that account because Facebook is telling me that uh, the password is incorrect. But <laughs> of course, the password is incorrect because they changed it, you know. So, uh, you know, I want to still post in public, but is there like something you do to prevent this from happening, you know, again? Because okay. I do want to do it public so people outside of my friends can, you know, see, right. you, you know, I'm selling. Change your password often, like I do. About once every month, I do go on my Facebook and I change all my social media passwords once a month just to prevent hacking. And most of the time when people get hacked, they're not really hacked. It's just someone making a duplicate of their Facebook page. Yeah, that, I mean, people were saying that I was, you know, I was selling some bunch of items <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not moving and I'm not selling those items. So that's yeah. how I found out I was well, hacked. See, I have like five different people that have used my picture and my name and they're not real. They're not really posting too much that I, but I went in and reported them, you know, yeah. I, I looked for my name and I went in and reported them to Facebook that yep. did away with a couple of them because yeah, I did that. Them. And uh, they're saying that my, that account is valid. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But, no. but if you say they're using your, are they using their picture or just your name? That's my name. And they're that's using why they're just your name. But what, what do they have in the profile? Is it well, your picture I I or their picture? Doing, they didn't have my, they had my picture at first, okay. but now they don't, but they're still using that account because there's a lot of Mitzi pens, but the one that I know is mine um, because I kind of looked at the Facebook link. I know it was mine. So um, Facebook is saying it is a valid account so that it's not um, hacked. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to keep worrying about it, but I don't want it to happen again. So yeah. I, maybe I'll do that and I'll change, I'll change my password more often or something. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good way. I, I, it's hard to say how people do that because, you know, it's like, really? But see, I find that, with with Instagram, I get a lot of people that come in and want to be my friend. And, you know, I just 
research before I accept friends. Same here. And I don't even accept friends on Instagram because most of the time they're it's not what you think it is. Yeah, right. right. So, for watch them naked or something. If, you're, if your yeah. Facebook is connected to Instagram, sometimes that's a problem. So I yeah, don't know what with, yours is, Maria. Yeah, uh, Instagram not, isn't a problem. Sorry, Instagram isn't a problem for me. The Facebook is because Instagram didn't get hacked. And then okay. it usually comes together. So thank God at least one of them didn't get hacked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so... This is where I, I know we're in the middle of this, but I know I've met the half hour limit that I'm giving myself. So this is where we're going to stop for tonight. But okay. next week, I'm going to have another leadership boot camp and we will pick up from this, go more into, you know, the hundred dollar order and in our connection and engaging with the new representatives that we get. So I think that's going to be a key thing for um, more learning. And because this is recorded, those that couldn't join us tonight will be able to pick this up and then still uh, join us next week if that works out for their, for their schedule better. So thank you all for coming on tonight. And um, like I said, we're going to go into more. Darwin, go into the last slide for me, the Zig Ziglar, um, which is the same slide that I share every time in boot camp. And because I just really think this is a good thing to think about. So this is what Zig Ziglar says is you can't chase money. Money is too fast. Choose people to serve people and money will chase you. So I know I've covered that one each time, but I think it it can make your mind really think about, you know, how the business is working for you by not chase not chasing money because money is too fast. So just work it with people and then the money will chase you. Okay. All right, All right. you guys. Thanks for joining us and uh, have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.